Hi, I'm Professor Peter McDougall. I graduated from Halebury in 1967. I'm now the Chief Medical Officer and Executive Director of Medical Services and Clinical Governance at the Royal Children's Hospital. The main thing for me was the education. But the main teacher who influenced me the most uh, is uh, Johnny Neal. He took me for chemistry in year 12, or matriculation as it was called then. I didn't do very well in the other sciences, but uh, Johnny Neal was incredibly influential and I got a very high mark in chemistry uh, in that final year, which got me into medicine. I spent my first six years, undergraduate years, getting my medical degree at Melbourne University. Then I spent two years at what was then Panch or Preston and Northgate Community Hospital. I uh, was very keen uh, on pursuing a career in obstetrics and in fact uh, my mentors there very much encouraged me. So I went and applied for a, for a job in the training school but I got knocked back. What they said at the interview was perhaps you should go and uh, work in paediatrics for a year. So I uh, went and applied at the Royal Children's Hospital and uh, they took me straight away and uh, I just fell in love with uh, the practice of paediatrics. But in 1979 I became quite restless, I'd done four years at the Children's and I felt that I really needed to move out of the state, out of the country and get more experience and it really attracted me, the, the thought of going and living in England. It wasn't until I moved to Bristol that I realised how good the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne was. When, you, when you're in a, a place, and you take a lot of things for granted. But to this day, I'll never take anything for granted that happens at the Royal Children's Hospital. It is an amazing place. People ask me, you know, why paediatrics? It's very heartbreaking, you see all the sad things. And the answer to that is yes, you do. Do I come to terms with that? No, I don't come to terms with that. That is very sad when uh, children die or are disabled. But the rewards are also immense. You go into medicine and uh, paediatrics to make a difference. And that's, that's what really charges you. To me, to help people was, was why I went into medicine, actually. The most challenging time in my career was um, a very drawn out coroner's inquest in 1991. A colleague of mine and I looked after in 1989 who had very major disabilities and the parents and us made a decision not to pursue active, very traumatic surgery and just before the child died uh, the Right to Life Association intervened in the hospital and they reported uh, this event to the police and the police came and interviewed us on a Friday afternoon which I had vivid in my memory and the policeman leaned forward and said to my colleague if you say anything further you could be charged with attempted manslaughter. The coroner came down very heavily in favour of the management that my colleague and I gave and the hospital gave to the child and to the parents. But it had a very profound effect on me. Uh, I was, uh, made me, um, had to reevaluate my whole career after that. And it wasn't until about uh, four or five years ago that uh, my colleague and I actually um, talked about it uh, in public. We, we let the parents know. Uh, the family came and met with us and uh, thanked us. And uh, that was, uh, it was very important. One of the clinical achievements that I'm most proud of is introducing high-frequency 
oscillatory ventilation to Australia. We taught other hospitals in Australia how to use it and it's now standard practice throughout the country. We got sent this uh, tiny little baby from another hospital and the neonatologist there said her, her brother just died and uh, she had a twin and look, she's going to die too, but I've heard about this ventilator. You want to give it a go? And uh, sure enough, she was absolutely critically ill. And we, we uh, tried a technique of this high-frequency ventilation, which did improve her, but it wasn't getting her better. But we'd learned in the laboratory, if we altered the settings, uh, which was to lower the very high-frequency rate. And I went to the parents and I said, look, I don't think we can offer anything further. And she leaned forward to me and she said, look, is there anything you can do? And I said, look, you know, I've kind of got this other technique and we've not tried it on a, on a, a baby before. Um, and she said, please try it. And we tried it and she got better within a few days. It's extraordinary. And she just continued to improve. So it was pretty special. One of the main things uh, that I'm grateful for going to Halebury was that, that I had quite a few f close friends that I formed at Halebury and I still see them today. And uh, Peter Atkinson, Lou Irving and I uh, have been walking along Elwood Beach for since 1984. I think my greatest strength is my dedication to uh, the field of medicine and um, making a difference uh, to the life of children and their families. I think it's very important to have a sense of humour in most branches of medicine and uh, certainly in management. You know, there are times when you get disappointments, uh, there are times when you don't get your own way, uh, there are times when you don't get on with people. There are times when you make mistakes. I think as long as you learn from those things, then you can uh, get to where you want to get. And I think that's really important. <laughs>